is making a living. And uh, one of the things I always did was look in terms of what would be uh, important for whatever they needed. For example, if you needed cowboy music uh, for with uh, uh, Gene Autry, I play cowboy music. <laughs> He says, yeah, oh, here. can't stay in tune, just so I have to make adjustments for it. <laughs> so, because, it, it actually takes elevation and changes the pitch of the guitar, so if I'm a little out of tune, please, you'll understand. came out with this uh, tune called Well anyway if you haven't remembered it it doesn't matter because I'd like to forget it anyway <laughs> studio recording sessions, I used that song to the fullest extent. I must have made hundreds and hundreds of dollars off of that song just by the fact that working like on a film score, they'd say, uh, okay, guitar section, can one of the guitar players come up with something that's, uh, this scene takes place in Tunisia, and it's in a, in a, in a, in a in like the, a place where there, there's, a, there's a bar, and we'd like to have some Tunisian music. And I say, ah, I can do it. <laughs> Later, they asked me the same thing, only they said, uh, this, we need some music that uh, takes place in that country that's broke now, it's called Greece. So, uh, can you do it? Yeah. So anyway, I just kept on playing that same song all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll play a little bit of Mr. Lou that I had made an arrangement of when I was 16 years old, which I've never made any money off of, but I made money off of the fact of playing it for music that's from Tunisia and all that. So.
played that once, but I thought some of you people might have short memories, and so I remind you. Um, so anyway, uh, I uh, had an interesting uh, experiences with a lot of different actors and people. I've been uh, blessed working with uh, Warren Beatty, working with uh, there's a guy named uh, I can't remember his last name. But uh, he, I played a movie with, with him with guitar, and uh, his music was like this. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, crying all the time. Oh, that's right. I remember now. His name is Elvis Presley. <laughs> Uh, and I had a great experience with Elvis because I was called to do a recording or perform with him in the movie. And uh, on a movie set, when you're got these you know, hundreds of people running, walking around, they said, nobody talks to Elvis. Nobody talks to Elvis. If you talk to Elvis, you're going to be thrown off the set. So, I don't want to talk to him. I mean, he's a redneck and a rock and roll, and he's a lousy guitar player, too. <laughs> <laughs> it shows you know, I was very immature. So, uh, one day, you know, everybody says, well, we're taking a break, you know, and then guitar player's going to be in the way in the background, so, you know, I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll start playing, you know, sit, sit around practice. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you, but is it okay if I could just say a few words? I said, what is it? Am I fired? <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. He says, uh, I was noticing you playing guitar. He says, you know, I'd give anything if I could play guitar like you. And with that, I looked up at him and I said, you've really melted my heart. I said, I wish I was like you. So at that afternoon, all the Memphis Mafia guys around hanging around all this all coming around. Now before this, I understand, before this, I was nobody. I was dead meat on the set, you know, like you know, at that at that moment that afternoon, everybody's coming up, Dell, buddy, how can you, oh man, how can you have to hang out with us? Hey, Elvis has parties, you know, can, can you can you do this? Can you do that? Red West comes up and and I'm suddenly now the popular boy with Elvis Presley. And Elvis was just a wonderful guy to work with. And uh, and suddenly, but here's the thing that scared the heck out of me. In movies, when they block out a movie set in the morning, it's going to be this, this, and the girl's leg in front of the guitar player's face is going to be right in front of there so you won't see his face. That's the way it's blocked out, and that's where I'm standing there. Well, that afternoon, Elvis broke all the rules, and he comes running around, and I'm playing like this, standing around like this, and he looks at me like this and says, like, with his eyes, you're going to be in the movie with me, smile, and I sure smile. <laughs> so if you go to my website, dellcasher.com, you'll see that video of me playing with Elvis, along with Mars Welk, uh, on his TV show. Now, I wanted to touch another short subject here. Uh, and that is about the Wawa pedal. The Wawa pedal was really my uh, dream of how to give a voice to the guitar, and I felt the Wawa pedal uh, was the answer to it. The only problem was in the days that we're talking about <clears throat> 350 years ago, everything was by candlelight, but in, in 1967, we uh, developed the transistor and uh, I came up with the idea of how to make the guitar have a voice and go wah. So I played it for James Brown, and he says, yeah, it sounds cool, but why do you want the guitar to go wah? <laughs> so then I, uh, Vic Mizzy, who wrote The Adams Family, heard me playing it, and, just, and he said, kid, give me your phone number. Universal Pictures is gonna call you tomorrow, and you're gonna be on three or four movies. And I said, sure. No problem. I write down my number. Don't worry. Universal's going to call you tomorrow. And I said, got it. 
And I figured, you know, the fluff that, you know, flake off. You know. And the next morning, I get a call. Is this Dale Casher? And they said, yes, this is Universal Pictures contracting. Are you available for Vic Mizzy, who wrote The Addams Family, on his movie coming this coming week? And also, he needs you for another movie coming up a week after that called The Ghost of Mr. Chicken. And uh, and uh, I, I was on, I said, oh, yes, yes, yes. I, 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 it was for real. It was for real. Once in a while, there's some things that's real. And uh, so uh, right after that, I, uh, I was, became longtime friends with Vic Mizzy, who uh, wrote The Addams Family. Remember, ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba Themes, if you, for some of you, because those shows are long gone. I realize, I realize it. We're, we're looking at America's Got Talent. I don't know where it is, but <laughs> <laughs> but the point about uh, the wah wah pedal is that uh, I it became um, it's too bad it never caught on because nobody <coughs> has a wah pedal. I don't see. Yeah, I know. What we come have to come up to you do the thing. So uh, what I didn't like about the wah wah pedal was the fact that it was like in one place and, and it was just there. You went, went across and you're doing a stage. You got to run back and hit the wah wah pedal again. Back and, and I see these st stage acts all the time. And step on the pedal, and <coughs> stomp on it. Amazing. And I said, you know, this is this is really dumb. This is a dumb idea. So. Uh, you have to sign a disclaimer that you've never seen this because this is a secret. This is a secret. For example, uh, I'm going to describe to you, you. You see, well, if you can't, I'll tell you right now. I have no wah wah pedal on the stage here. Okay. So the fact is that I'm going to create the wah wah pedal with the Dell Casher guitar. Now, how are you going to do that? Well. Uh, one of the things that I felt when I invented the wah wah pedal was it shouldn't be it shouldn't be just like a I, I didn't like that kind of stuff you know I thought it should be you know just nice you know music like and I and I came up with like for example the wah wah pedal should be used for like over the rainbow now for people that don't know over the rainbow is a very famous song so. <laughs> just an ordinary guitar, just a guitar I picked up in a pawn shop. Yeah. <laughs> I put a couple of little, I went to the you know, electric store and picked up a little, few little parts here and there. And uh, that's how I'm able to get the wah pedal. So, Uh, 
Uh, for example, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, anybody, you know, everybody, is a, such a guitar is such a popular instrument, and so I have uh, written a song for anybody who wants to play the guitar. Like I, when I perform, people will say, "Oh, geez, I, I'm a lawyer and I'd love to play guitar, but I, oh, I can't play guitar." I said, "You can play the guitar. Anybody can play the guitar. That's why." I don't know how it is that we got six billion people in the world and we got six and a quarter billion guitar players. <laughs> I just don't know how that figures out. So I'm just going to show you this one finger blues that I composed. And you just you take your one finger. exercise for guitarists to use. I know this is finger picking, but uh, I'm a plectrum player. My dad's from Europe and we used uh, plectrum. So uh, this is a, uh, an, an exercise in that style. It's called the E minor etude. And uh, I would like to uh, show you how, uh... by the way, I just wrote a theme song uh, for a show called Deep Seven. And uh, here it goes. <laughs> children's show and uh, so I thought you know they wanted to hear something like you know like they said no we want bebop jazz so we use five saxophones four trumpets and four trombones and uh, so a 22, 22 piece band that I had to write for anyway it's uh, going to be on and it's going to start in September anyway let me finish up here with uh, this guitar etude and I really appreciate all of your attention to giving me a chance to play for you today
Thank <laughs> you.